Hey guys, welcome back. So today we are going to concentrate on the brake pedal. So let's get started. All right, so when you first press on the brake pedal, you're going to get a little bit of a lead in. So what that means is you'll have a spot at the very beginning where you'll get very little resistance. So let me demonstrate that. So how we do this is we've added a little spring on the front of the brake pedal and inside this spring is a small ABS plastic tube. And this plastic tube is designed to uh, stop the brake pedal before the spring compresses all the way. So once you've pressed the brake pedal far enough, you've hit the plastic tube. Now you've engaged the polyurethane bushings. Alright, so here's what the two polyurethane bushings look like when they're taken off the pedal. The red is the softer bushing and the black is the harder bushing. Now we've given you two extra so that you can use either two red ones or two black ones or you can use a black and a red. You can mix and match depending on what feel you're going for. Okay, so I've disassembled part of the brake pedal so that I can show you this back mechanism and give you some idea of how it works. Now, this entire mechanism is made up of two parts. Uh, the first part is the part up top where the shaft goes through and the polyurethane bushings uh, rest on. The second part is the bottom here where the two bolts are, as you can see, and this bottom piece has a shaft going through the center. So, essentially, this entire mechanism is a lever. So, the polyurethane bushings push against this back bracket on the top. The shaft goes through the center hole. This bottom part gets pulled up. It pulls up on these two bolts. And these two bolts are attached to the load cell. So when you press on the brake, this thing pulls up, pulls up on the load cell, which gives you your feedback in the game. All right, so this is a shot from underneath the brake pedal. Now, this the load cell is attached to this bracket from underneath with these two bolts. Now, these two bolts have a washer and a lock washer. You can see the two nuts right here. These two bolts that go through the load cell are the two bolts that get pulled up when you press on the brake pedal. And as you can see at the very top of the screen here, these two bolts right here hold together the top part of the bracket where the shaft goes through. And this is part of the assembly that pulls up on the two bolts right here. Okay, so I've got a load cell here in front of me and a rear assembly from a brake pedal. Now, this, this rear assembly is a little beat up. It's one of my older prototypes, so I have to apologize for the way that it looks. But for the purposes of this demonstration, it'll work just fine. Now, I have it apart because I wanted to give you sort of a visual representation of how we use leverage to manipulate the load cell. So I'm going to pick this up here. Now, the bolt that attaches to the side plate goes right through this aluminum sleeve, and that's where this back assembly pivots, just like that. So when you press on the brake, this back assembly will pivot and then pull up on the load cell by these two bolts.
Now each customer will receive an extra bump stop in the accessories bag. Now me personally, I don't use a bump stop on the brake pedal, but perhaps there's others out there that would want to. So I'm going to go over how to install this and uh, how to make adjustments to it. It's, it's fairly simple. So what we've done is we've added an extra hole on this load cell bracket and we've drilled it and tapped it at an angle. So this sits at an angle. So if you want to install this extra bump stop, you just need to take off the, uh, the shaft that has the polyurethane bushings and the spring and move the pedal arm forward so that you can get at this little hole. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on. Okay, so right now I've screwed it in at its, at its furthest depth. And I'll give you a demonstration on how this works. So if you're pressing on the brake pedal and you want it to stop, it'll hit the bump stop. Now, most people really wouldn't use this, uh, use this bump stop, but there may be some out there that, that might prefer to have a bump stop so that they know exactly, uh, where to stop braking. It's, it's just a little added feature that, uh, we thought some of you might be interested in. So, it's the same adjustment for the throttle pedal and the clutch pedal. All you have to do is loosen the nut and then unscrew this bump stop or screw it in, depending on where you want the brake pedal to stop. So let's say that I want it to stop when I get down further, I would screw it in. If I wanted it to stop up closer, then I would unscrew this and then tighten down the nut. Now if you find that you've screwed in the bump stop all the way, but you still don't have enough travel, what you can do is you can take out the bump stop and you can take it over to uh, either a grinder or a saw, or you can use a hacksaw if you like, and you can take off some of the threads. And what that will do is it'll shorten the distance. And that will enable you to screw it in even further into the hole so that you can get a little bit more travel out of the brake pedal. Now again, this is completely optional. It comes as an extra in the package, so you don't have to use it. But for those of you who do want to use it, we've included it. Now, the, the circuit board we're using is a DSD circuit board, and it has a sensitivity gain knob that we've placed on top of this box. So at this point, what you would do is you would have the brake pedal on the floor, and you would press on it, and see just how far you have to press, or how hard you have to press, in order to get to the max resolution. So let's just say that you're not happy with how it's working right now, so you want to give it a little bit more gain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it up a little bit, and you can see the numbers start to rise. All right. And I'll press on the brake pedal and I'll show you what happens. You can see that it starts to, to show some feedback in DX Tweak. All right, so let's say that you're still not satisfied with it and you need to tweak it some more. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it up a little bit more. I'm going to turn it up a little bit more. Put it to about, I don't know, maybe a thousand. That's good. Okay, so now you've got it where you want it. Let's press on the brake pedal now. And it goes all the way to full resolution. Now, I'm not pressing very hard. And it's just me. It's just my hand pressing. So I've got the sensitivity turned up uh, nice and high. I, I like to press a little bit harder on my brakes. I want to turn it down again. So there we go. I think about around 300. That's probably good. So let's press on the brake pedal again. So it takes quite a bit more force. And we're not even, we're only getting to about 2,000 right there. And I'm, I'm pressing pretty hard with my, with my hand. Okay, so now that we've got it just where we like it, we can go ahead and close DX Tweak.
Now, I've already mentioned that moving the load cell is not recommended. Now, with that said, if you do find that you'd like to move it, there are a couple of things that you need to know. So I already showed you the underside of the brake pedal, but I'm doing this again so that I can show you how to move the load cell properly. Now these two bolts hold the load cell in place, and as I said earlier, we use lock washers on these bolts to keep them from backing out. So after you have the bolts loose, the load cell should be free to move. Now you don't want to move the load cell too far forwards or backwards. If you move it too far towards the rear, the rear mechanism won't have room to pivot back and forth. If you move it too far towards the front of the pedal, then the rear mechanism may not have enough leverage to get the full resolution out of the load cell. So what we've done is we've installed the load cell in a position that allows you to use its full resolution. Now with that said, after you've moved the load cell into a position that you like, tighten down these two bolts but you need to make sure that these bolts are nice and tight. You don't want these bolts coming loose in the middle of a race. And don't ask me how I know that. Alright, so I think we've covered just about everything there is to cover with the brake pedal. If you do want to know how to make adjustments to things like the pedal face or the pedal arm angle or the pedal tension, you can refer back to the throttle pedal video. I covered those things in detail. In the next video, we're going to be talking about the clutch pedal and how to make adjustments to the clutch mechanism. And I'll do my best to be as thorough as possible. Oh, and one more thing before I forget. I know it's kind of strange that I'm wearing gloves in the video all the time, but this is a production pedal, so I don't want to get these dirty. So you'll have to forgive me for wearing gloves. All right, guys, we will see you next time.